one man tossed eternally into the wilderness, he will have to battle and beat some of RuneScape's toughest monsters in order to supply and upgrade his weaponry and armor. All of this while being able to be attacked by any other player at any given time. But who? Who would take on such a fearsome challenge? I present... Wildernator! Previously with Wildernator, we killed 3,000 revenants in the hope of reclaiming our third <clears throat> crossbow. No such luck for now. We opened our remaining Laranial keys and got lucky with two pieces of Dagenhai. After a small 140 hours of fishing shrimp, we finally caught our first dark crab. And finally, we made some upgrades to our spare wards and stocked up on supplies in anticipation of the new wilderness bosses. Hello guys, how are we all diddling? Welcome to episode 13 and the final episode before we kick off season 3. The boss wilderness rework is finally here guys! <laughs> I thought a nice place to start would be to show the log before we kill any of the bosses so you can see where we currently are and also it'll be a nice point of reference for myself. I've actually just realised we've already got the pet from Vetion and because of the graphical rework of the main guy I'm sure that the pets have been updated as well so let's see yes the little model's been updated so let's have a little look at this guy and see what he's looking like. Hey that's pretty cool I think Jaggett's have done a really nice job on that big fan of him very very nice let's metamorphosize. Okay, that's cool. So you can have the regular versions as well. So that's not too bad if you like the old version, is it? Nah, the new version be looking a lot, lot better in my opinion. We firstly decided that we we're going to try and use a rune crossbow on all of the bosses. Just bring some really welfare gear out. I got one KC on all of the single variants. On screen is me very, very badly killing the bosses. These clips were created the second that the update dropped. I went in completely blind, just in some welfare gear. It was just great fun those diving into the unknown and brought back some of a nostalgic feeling of just really not having a clue what you were doing. Having to try and think on our feet and just work it out completely alone. No guides, no nothing, didn't watch any streamers, we just went in balls deep. We instantly took a liking to Calvarion. The mechanics were really cool, the look was fantastic and it was the first boss that we started to really knock out the kills on. Kill number 10 is where everything changed. It dropped two doses of super combat potions. This is going to be absolutely huge for Wildenator and something we previously didn't have access to. It didn't take long before we get into our first tussle and trust me the first day was absolute mayhem. Magical, but mayhem. There are some ruins 8 levels down from Cal... Let's just call him Singles Vetagon and save us all the trouble. The ruins have four floors. Ladder roulette with four floors really doesn't put the odds in the PK's favour. If you can tank it to these ruins you'll almost certainly get the log and that's exactly what we did with our first encounter. <gasps> Ring of the gods! Yes! Get in! I'm in the Discord call with some of the boys right now so that'll be spoilers for some of them but what a result! Day of release Ring of the gods! The bosses have been absolutely booming and I've been having such a blast. As you can imagine there's been a fair bit of this Luckily, I don't risk too much other than the ether in my weapon, but we've also had a little sprinkling of this. There we go, that's going to be KC50 up Calvarion. Uh, really enjoyed that, it's a really nice mechanic to this boss, but let's move on and do some of the others. All of the boss layers have surrounding areas with either gates, trees, or something that you're able to entangle behind, which is pretty nice for the escape. You know something? You're right. If you get lucky with PKs and a few supply drops, you can actually get a half decent amount of kills. I think this was about a 10 kill trip, so if we can get a few more of those, it's not going to be too shabby at all. Not bad money either, to be completely honest. This is going to be KC50 at Spinnel, the big old spider. So let's get our arse over to the single variants of Callisto and see if we can do a bit of that. It's been a while since we used the VLS, so I wanted to dust him off and see what he was like against RTO in the Bounty Hunter world. Wolf's suspects were actually pretty good and hit him pretty hard. The rest of it was a pretty slow kill and we soon realised it wasn't going to be a particularly viable method for killing RTO unfortunately. Now I'm not one to be in the PK shaman market, but this PK ended up doing more damage to himself than he did to me. If you have some decent anti-PK in gear, it's very viable to anti at all single variants. We did manage to hold down RTO throughout this kill with the man bolting us and we did manage to get the kill. The most efficient way to kill Callisto is to freeze him in place and range him down. 
Whilst we're still learning and wanting the initial 50 kills, we used the far more scuff method of just sticking some tank gear on, accepting he's going to hit us a bit through melee, Ruby bolting him down to half health and finishing with the chain mace. It's certainly the Nubia method, but you don't have to deal with any prey switching, nor can he knock you back because you're meleeing and hugging the wall. Once we have a better feel for Callisto, we will use the freezing and ranging method, but for now this worked and managed to get us to the 50 kills. I decided to hold a little event up at the multi Callisto to try out our first multi-boss. This was organised and done on Discord. It's public, but we manually invite people, so drop myself or Aaron Adam will add you into the clan Discord. It makes it slightly easier to moderate, and I also like to get to know people on an individual basis. Or you can jump into the CC, which is just Wildernator. It was such good fun being able to do it with the boys, and pretty much since I start this account, everything's been completely solo, so props to Jaggets for making it so Iron Men are able to do this with some friends it's really reclined uh, way more than i'd expected a lot of this is probably down to doing it with people far more experienced than myself so thank you very much for that boys but i do think my go-to clanning boss will be callisto definitely going to do more of these in the future and maybe some smaller group than in Artis. we didn't get any drops on this occasion but we did have a blast speaking of which we did a couple of kills as a trio i don't have the clip but here's a picture first kill one of the boys landed the fangs of venonatus Hopefully it'll only be a matter of time before one of the new uniques is mine. We now have a pretty good understanding around Calvarion. He has a few mechanics, whilst they're fairly simple, I do like the fact that if you do things purposely, you'll take no damage at all at this boss. One of his attacks you'll see shadows on the floor, you need to run off of these shadows, else they'll damage you and slow your next attack. You can't run towards him, otherwise he'll smash you in the nose with a shield and slow your next attack anyway. Similar as before, at half health, Vettion will bring out his Hellhounds, although both Vettion and Hellhounds have much less HP than before. If you're a big, strong, beefy lad and you're able to hit a 75 and kill Vettion, you can actually skip this mechanic, but that's far beyond our capabilities on this account. When you kill the first form, he'll spawn an orange ring. You'll need to be two tiles away from these, so you can either run under him to the centre of the circle, or run away from him. Both forms have spots on the ground and you'll need to be two tiles from these. This is obviously a little RNG dependent, but as long as you're not directly on them, they don't hit you very hard anyway. And finally, once you've dodged them all and you've done everything correctly, you need to stand up on your computer chair, do a little jig, and you'll always get the dragon pickaxe drop. The solo bosses are a great way to learn the multi-bosses. I also sometimes just head up there and start killing them with random players. It really does have that MMO RPG vibe. Although, do beware of those naughty Void Waker spies. Little trick can be so beneficial for the account. We've got super combats, wines, bones, ores, really nice stuff. Sometimes you do get a swift kick back to reality with a big team kicking you in the head. But honestly, it's nice to see. I'm having a good time, but it's also great to see those that enjoy PKing with their mates having a blast too. Come on, Tubby, you're better than that. I splash my fair share of entangles too, but on this occasion, bend the knee and take the seat, son. We now also have a pretty good grasp on Spindle. Firstly, you want to prioritise the small spiders. As they make Spindle stronger, they also drain your prayer and they do hit you for a small amount of damage. If Spindle does spawn a set of spiders when he's nearly dead, you're better off just finishing the kill at that point than re-killing the small spiders. Spindle will move twice each time before throwing a web. You're going to really want to prioritise avoiding the webs as they hit you for rapid threes very quickly. They also drain your prayer and your run. When you know he's on a web phase, you're going to want to be as close to the outside of his lair as possible as this will manipulate the web so there won't be enough tiles for him to throw a full web. Also, when he's running about his lair, the web will be right at the edge so it's not going to get in the way of you getting to Spindle. Finally, just make sure you stay close to Spindle, else he'll range or mage you. This is on a cycle that you can work out, but honestly, just staying within the melee range is going to be the easiest option for you. We got 100kc at Spindle, and then we decided it was time to go and learn RTO. RTO proves to be our most challenging boss. We don't currently have the crossbow, and feathers are hard to come by for us when we're using bolts. We currently don't have Ancients, so we need to hold him with the Entangle spell, which is a little bit more difficult. Just as we were learning, things took a dirty, dirty turn. Your boy was skull tricked. Yep. It was one of the oldest skull tricks in the books. They leave and re-enter with an account that looks the same with a very similar name. I'd forgotten to open up my recorder on this one, so my art degree will have to do. 
I don't attack back all that often, but with the update came an influx of new PK, so I thought, what the hell. But Wildenator, you massive penis, they have a skull prevention now. Yeah, without the Avarice to turn it off or set Revenants, and I just forgot to put it back on. Two out of three of the new bosses, I would have been using the Chain Mace, and likely lost that. So I'm so thankful that R2 was what I learnt the lesson on. We did lose the Zami Dehyde Shield, but that will be fairly redundant once we reclaim the Crawls. I also lost Dagon High top and bottom. Yep, again. <laughs> but thankfully, we had a spare set. Then, something happened. The Dagon High Sacrifice once again summoned the gods. I forgot to put the recorder up for the actual drop, but yes, 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 yes. Oh, that is so good. Claws of Callisto. That is such a good drop. 88 KC. I was only ever going to do 100. This boss was a pain in the ass. We've had some terrible times here. That's the Chain Mace attachment. The Chain Mace is what I'm going to be using for Vetion and Venonata, so I can absolutely session those out. Man, that is so happy. And if I was going to spoon one drop, I really, really wanted it to be the Claws. You can make the Earth Sign Chain Mace yourself with 85 Smithing. I have the things banked for 85 Smithing, but it's a long old grind because of where the Anvil is placed in the wilderness. And you bet your ass we ain't waiting for that to use this Earth Sign Chain Mace. We're going to be using this. You can go to this geezer in the Ferox Enclave and get him to make it for you. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Let's have a little look at the absolute beastie thing. Yes! Look at it. Look at that. Yes, very happy of that. The Ursine Chain Mace also has a special, which obviously the Vigoras doesn't. It deals an extra 20 damage over 6 seconds with a successful hit. So that's going to be a lot more DPS to the bosses. It's also good against PKs as it stops them being able to run for 3.6 seconds. So it will be a good escape from them. It would also be a good escape at Revenants as it reduces the PKs agility level. Oh, look at that big, strong, throbbing 51 with the Ursine. When you consider I'm really not in strength bonus, that is so nice to see. The Ursine is leading us to some big old beefy trips up here. I'm just walking away. Dooby dooby doo doo dooby doo doo. I'm just walking away. <laughs> Good fight. All good things must come to an end. We got quite a few escapes there, but uh, that Karassi into Claws Rage, yes, is deadly. You just do not know what to pray. There we go. We've been knocking out these kills. That's going to be KC at number 250. I think it's time we head over to some Calvenion to knock out some kills there. Let's have a little look in the looting bag. Oh, it is absolutely filled to the ba -ba 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 brim with goodies. Because it's a new update, Runelight didn't trap the start of the kills, but this is a loot from 149 spindles. We also put the Ursine to good use, knocking out 250 Calvenion kills. No Skull as of yet, but when we do get that, that's going to be a huge upgrade to the Theramon Scepter. It's going to be best in slot for the Crazy Archaeologist, Scorpia, and a hell of a lot of Wilderness Slayer tasks. On screen, there's loot we got from 250 kills. We got a ton of planks, and we'll have 80 construction in no time for the player-owned House Obelisk at this rate. Finally, we're going to be doing a new graphic for Season 3. This is everything I can think to include. Please let me know if you feel anything should be added or taken away. And I'll make a really nice graphic for it. I've already started planning Season 3 and the first episode should be an absolute banger and will explain everything. Thank you all very much for sticking through the series. The videos have been absolutely popping off the last month or two. That being said, please do make sure you continue liking and interacting. It really does help more than you'll ever know. I absolutely love communicating with you guys as well. I really want to put the time and effort in, so if you guys are enjoying it, this will be by far our strongest year yet. YouTube members is a nice way to support the channel if you've got a spare couple of quid kicking about. That being said, an absolutely massive thank you to Air E L U W 2 202 Mil E M B T Jacob Brooks Carsten Spiderkill 93 and we have a new name on the list, J. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Brighter nights are coming, the evenings are drawing out, and things are looking bright. Until next time, guys, thank you very much, and goodbye.